lot I've ever done on the crazy card, hands down. This thing is so fast. Hey Ryan, they want you on stage. Husky bean. Hey, they want you on stage. Husky Bean! <laughs> you want me for a pillow? <laughs> hey, they want you out there. Hey, everyone wants you out there. Getting my logo is legit, dog. <laughs> What's up everybody, this is Ryan from Taxi Garage here today. And today we're gonna to be going over our newest product that we're releasing into the world today. And it is our Crazy Cart 1000 watt motor upgrade for the Crazy Cart XL model. We're so stoked to bring you this because this takes your XL to the next level of full send that we know all of you Crazy Carters have been waiting for. Today we're gonna to go over the install, what the, par the parts look like as you get them out of the box, um, and all the tools you're going to need to install these parts on your crazy cart today. So first off, we're going to go over some of the tools that we have here. You're going to need your basic snips, um, just a very thin flathead screwdriver, uh, an extension with a 10 mil, a 10 mil open end wrench, and we're going to need your 4 mil Allen, 5 mil Allen, and your 6 mil Allen. And then I also have this little nifty little thing which just helps in getting the covers off the XL and you'll see that later in the video. And then we also have an electric drill with a Phillips head tip on it. And then I have an electric gun with a 3 ace ratchet drive on it. And here is what everyone has been waiting for. This is the Crazy Cart XL 1000 watt motor upgrade. This has a tooth upper gear. And this is where all the full send dreams are made of. And this adapts to your factory XL neck. So there's no need to buy any other type of steering neck or anything. This motor literally bolts up with our patented adapter bracket that you see here and bolts it onto your stock setup and allows you to just have a ton of fun and send it just exactly what we expect you to do. So some of the great features about this motor upgrade is that it also comes with cooling fins built into the motor. So it is an air-cooled unit. And a lot of the previous models actually have a lot of issues on the stock setups for overheating these motors. We took that into account when we made this upgrade and we made sure we built it with a motor that we could accommodate some cooling fins with it as well. So basically it uses our standard Anderson connectors which allow you to get the maximum amount of amperage through your connector safely without melting them. It comes with a new completely heat shrinked Anderson connector harness that allows you to have a modular harness. So in case over time, most people, you know, have to, you know, either replace their motor or fix their wiring over time, we've created it on a separate harness that you can, you know, install with ease and just unplug directly from the motor and route around your cart with much more ease than what it was from the factory setup. So these are the first two parts. The next two parts we're gonna go over is it comes with a brand new chain. So the factory XL chain does not work with this upgrade. You do need this new chain that comes complete with the kit. So we include that with the kit. And then it also comes with the hardware that you need, our patented gold and silver M6 by one bolts. You know, we love that 10 mil. Everyone's always got one laying around somewhere, so we put it to use. So we got those. And then we've got, sure enough, a brand new Taxi Garage 1000 watt 48 volt controller. And this does bolt into the factory XL location. And basically, it all is plug and play. Doesn't get any easier than this. This is like literally the, the simplest, most easiest thing you can do for your XL to get a ton of power and a ton of reliability and just no more issues with these factory motors. Everyone always complains about them, so this will solve that today. So first off, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our covers off this 
beautiful brand new XL that we have here. You can see this card is basically untouched, unmolested. Hasn't been abused by us yet, that's for sure. Um, basically, you just go ahead and go around the covers and remove your factory Phillips head screws. And you'll notice on the other side, there's a nut that may want to fall out on its own, which is fine. You just go ahead and grab them as they come out. Okay, so that's all those. And then there's these two Allen screws down here. And this is why I showed you this crazy tool that I have here on this little swivel. And it's because this one comes in at that weird angle and allows you to get to these. Obviously you could use a hand tool version, you know, just a standard 90 degree Allen wrench. But basically this setup allows me to get to those with a lot more ease because these screws are probably the most difficult screws you'll remove today. <laughs> so we set those aside, go ahead and get this other screw out so we can remove the covers completely and see what we're working with here. You see I fiddle a little bit because they aren't the easiest to get to or even see from that. And then I fat finger them and unscrew them by hand. Lovely. Awesome. All right, so I'm setting all the screws aside into a spot that I know I won't lose them. So I'm going to take off this cover first. Just in case all the screws aren't unscrewed, I can go ahead and hit them a little more. Sometimes the XL covers are a little finicky and the nuts like to spin in the plastic. It might take a little coercion to get it out, or it might be spinning yeah, in the other side of the cover. Exactly what I didn't want. So, we're going to have to take a quick break for a quick second while I remove this unhappy nut. All right, so basically we had a really stuck nut that was spinning in the plastic here, so I just jammed it with a screwdriver and just unscrewed it at the same time and I was able to get the cover off. So obviously this part has had some amount of neglect. <laughs> As you can see, the paint on the inside is pretty nasty. So what we have here on this stock cart is a bunch of dust and dirt, which we'll, we'll clean up as we go through. But basically we have the original 60 tooth lower gear and this gear is what came on the original XLs when they were first released. And we're gonna be changing that today. We're gonna to be running our 45 tooth lower gear, which is what you need to run with this kit, which majority of all XLs come standard with that 45 tooth. It's just a few that actually come with the 60 tooth. And we do recommend converting to the 45 tooth when you do do the motor install. So we'll be doing that today as well. So you see the full overall install that is needed. So basically the one thing I like to do is I like to remove the steering wheel to make things a little easier. And what that entails is just a six millimeter Allen key. You just barely crack this that nut loose just a little bit. And then you tap the steering wheel, comes out, set it aside. Then I like to grab my extension and a 10 mil on my extension. And then I like to go ahead and just remove the motor. And that's these four 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the steering neck. And the last one, the motor should fall, making it easy for you to remove. All right, so now the motor's not gonna come out just yet because it still has wiring running through the cart. Well, that's the next reason why we have this tool which are the handy little snips that we've got here. And basically we're gonna go ahead and snip this little wire tie that we got here. So that's gone. Any other zip ties that we got here? We're gonna snip those as well. Now we have to trace where this motor wire goes, which it goes into the storage compartment into this XL model. And we need to find the wiring that runs to the motor. The motor wiring always runs to the plug with the blue and yellow switch. And so basically, 
to get this motor wiring out intact, what you need to do is snip that little snip, take this wire, and there's two pins that you actually need to press down in here. We're gonna try to focus in on this. And you see that little open rectangle above these two silver pins. That's what that small flathead screwdriver is for that I was showing you in the beginning of the video. This tool right here. So basically what you need to do is you need to shove this into that opening. Hopefully you can see it. You shove it into the opening, you push it in there and the pin should come out of the plastic connector. You can see I'm shoving it into this rectangular opening and then the pin should unlock and slide right out of the connector. So now, can go ahead and remove the motor wiring harness completely. It's caught on something here, boom. Now I've got the motor wiring harness here. Pull the motor out of the neck. You can go ahead and begin fishing it out of the factory hole. Boom. Factory motor already removed in under, I don't know, less than five minutes. It's very quick, very easy, especially if you have some good tools. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to remove the factory controller because what we're gonna be doing with this kit is we're installing a brand new controller. So we're gonna go over everything that's needed to get this kit installed. And then we're also installing one of our Taxi Garage batteries, which is the 48 volt battery kit that we sell on the website for the XL. You do need our 48 volt battery kit to run this motor setup. The controller is only able to run off 48 volts. So your stock battery pack will not work. So this, this kit does need to be run in conjunction with our 48 volt battery pack. This is the factory batteries, you can see huge. Go ahead and unplug them from that factory controller. Toss them to the side, not gonna use them, never gonna see them ever again. Go ahead and unplug. This is the power connector. Sometimes it's a little finicky, give it a little wiggle. And then you're also gonna remove the power harness off of the on and off switch. So these straight spades that you see coming off the on and off switch, we've just removed them. Leave the 90 degree one on the on and off switch. This whole harness that you see right here, no longer used. Toss it to the side. So now the last thing to unplug is the charge port. Not too difficult. You can see there's also another zip tie here holding the wires together. I'm gonna go ahead and snip that. And then there's also the throttle cable. This is the throttle harness. And sometimes it's a bit finicky to remove. Ooh, giving me my thumb workout for the day. Oh, wow. Well, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. And to remove your factory controller are two Phillips head screws. Very simple, very easy. Save those screws, we're gonna need them. Set them aside, because the new controller will need those screws. There, now I got it out. So this is your factory controller. You can save this as spare parts, whatever you want to do with it. You know, all of that stuff, if it's still good on your cart, you could still technically save it, have a spare parts bin, do whatever you like with those. So now you're gonna take your new taxi garage controller. Ah, and you're gonna go ahead and reuse those two screws that you just unscrewed. First screw goes into the same spot that it came out of. I just like to hand thread things first just to get everything started. Second screw goes right back into the same spot it came out of. And you'll see this controller bolts into the factory location without any mods and allows you to have a completely factory looking motor up there. Controller is nice and tight, locked in. Now what we have here are the three plugs that you need. These plugs come pre-wired. What I'm doing here is just adapting this plug real quick to work with your throttle harness. 
So this three wire plug that says to put is actually the throttle and that will plug into this six wire throttle pin and it'll actually be a three wire sitting in the six wire. And then you will take the one that says power locks and you'll notice the kit comes with an extra harness which is this that comes supplied in our kit which is a new on and off switch harness. So basically for power locks you plug in this little switch and this now plugs in to these 290 degrees. The orientation of which one goes where is not relevant. As long as they both are on those 290 degree spades, you're good. And then obviously the charge port, boom, charger clipped in, good to go. Now obviously this charge port wiring, this charger does not get used when you do run our 48 volt upgrade, but the controller does use it for reference. So we still maintain its wiring on the cart. So now we're gonna go back to the front of the cart. And we are going to install in all of its glory, the motor upgrade. <laughs> so. The motor upgrade utilizes the four 10 millimeter bolts just like what you saw in the original motor, except these have nuts on the bottom. So basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the nuts off of these bolts, set them to the side. Ba boom And you're gonna take the motor and you're gonna face the gear towards the gear side and you're gonna go ahead and slip the motor in. I like to slip the motor in from the side that the tensioner is not on because it makes it easier to push the tensioner away from you as you're sliding it in. Then you push it up to the top of the neck and you should be able to see the holes that the motor is going to line up to. And once you see those holes, you slip a bolt through and you get a nut on one of them. I recommend starting with one of the back holes because it's a bit easier than those front ones to get to. And once you get it on, then you can let go of the motor and you can work your way around the other three. So. Uh, take some fiddling. Nothing ever is easy, huh? No, this is easy compared to what I normally have to do on a daily basis. Except I gotta see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I can see. Alright, so we got one nut started. So basically now the motor's just kind of dangling there. Now I'm gonna come to the other side. I'm going to put the other bolt in the back part where the back rearmost hole and I'm going to stick my 10 mil up there and I'm going to get it threaded by hand. Boom. Got it on there. Now you can see the motor starting to sit in there pretty nice. Now we're going to get the front bolts. I'm going to get the 10 mil on the bottom. It's much easier now once the motor is sitting in there to start getting the nuts on. Then I go around to the last one and I go ahead and slip this on. Now at this point, you don't want to fully bolt this down or do any of that yet. But the next thing you need to do is, next you're going to grab your wiring harness for the motor. And you'll notice one side in the kit comes pinned and the other side comes unpinned. You see the terminals are on it. And this is because you need to fish this side with no terminal or with the terminals just showing through the neck on your crazy cart. So what we're gonna show is me feeding these terminals in through the neck and actually catching them on the other side. Now what I might do is I might use a screwdriver to help direct them to my side to kind of aim them towards me as they go through the hole. 
there you go. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but they're coming towards me now. And you can see that I've got the harness through now. Now once you get it through about this long, this is all you'll need to start working with it. So basically what you need to do is, it comes with this boot. You're gonna wanna slip this boot over these wires, right? Then fold the boot back as much as you can. Sometimes I like to flip it back over itself just to get as much room as I can on these wires to put the terminals on. Okay, so I flipped it back over itself. Now it'll be a bit easier. So basically this shovel looking portion of it has to go ahead and go in the terminal just like so. Sometimes they're easy and you can push them right in. Other times you need to use a little bit of force and push them in from the back. So what I like to do is I put them in initially and then I push them in and seat them completely with a flathead. And you'll see that that one is now locked into that red connector. And now I need to do the same for this black one. So you can see it wants to go in. You line up the shovel where you can see it. And I like to take this flathead, push it in from the back, and boom. Now they're both pinned. Now what you'll do is you'll see there's a little high rectangular portion here and then there's a recessed rectangular portion. That actually keys into that and you slide them into each other so now they're connected as one. Once they're connected as one, you can go ahead and turn this back the right side out. And yes, it does take a bit of fiddling but it's nothing crazy. You can see I'm just using the flathead screwdriver to lip it over itself and boom. Got it. And now it looks just as if it was brand new, untouched. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to plug this in, red on red, black on black, into the motor. Then you're going to go ahead and pull this wiring up until the wiring sits against the side of the motor just like you see here. The two connectors should be laying against the motor, just like that. And once you have that situated, now you can go ahead and tighten your motor. So what we like to do is start with one, get it snugged, snug it up, go to the next one, and I'm just holding the 10 mils with my hands to make sure they don't spin. So now I'm giving it its final tighten. And you can go ahead and look from the side here. Now you look at the chain and you can see the chain and this gear are basically in really good alignment. Now you'll, you will see one thing, the tensioner is slightly rubbing right now. So one thing we do is we do have to modify this tensioner just a little bit. And I will show you right now what we do to modify it. And you can see it's just ever so slightly rubbing on it. And obviously when the chain is installed, we, we imagine it won't even be an issue. But just to cover all bases, we recommend you take a flathead screwdriver, rest it against the motor, and just pull this tensioner back away from the fork and bend it a little bit back. And you can see I just bent it a little bit and now look, do you see that I have clearance here now between the motor? Even while I'm pushing the tensioner towards it, I'm still not able to come into contact with it and it still maintains per perfect functionality and does not have any issues with the motor. We're touching it now. So basically that's all we recommend you do. Take a little flathead, pull the tensioner back away from the stem and pry it just a little bit, just so when you let go of it, it's not rubbing against the motor now. So that's how we solve that issue. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the 45 tooth 
gear with tire on the bottom end of this car and we're going to install the new chain that this kit came supplied with. So we're going to go over that right now. Oh yeah, just dropping hardware. We've got our trusty gun with our 16 millimeter open end socket on it and we are going to remove this factory axle nut. It's much easier with a gun than two open end adjustable wrenches. It's kind of a pain in the butt that way if you ask me. You remove the axle bolt, the two spacers will fall out. You're gonna reuse all that stuff. This stuff, we're not gonna be reusing. We have a complete, from our website, 45 tooth gear, with com which comes with a gear, uh, basically guide and protector for the gear mounted to the rim as well from factory and basically this is a complete brand new wheel just the way Razor sells it and we're going to be installing this today with our motor upgrade kit just to go over what kind of gear setup you need to run this kit so basically initially you're going to need the chain so this is our new chain fresh out of the pack this is what you need to run the kit. So the first thing I like to do is I like to loop the chain. You might want to go around to the other side. Loop the chain around the motor side first. I always find that it's always easier to start this way. So now you can see, boom, chains on the motor gear. Everything's gravy. Then what I like to do is I slip in the XL wheel. And then you take the spacer, slide the wheel so it's aligned. And you're gonna have to fish this through. And then obviously there's an inside spacer on the center of the XL wheel that you need to line up, which if you've done these before, you know you need a second screwdriver to try to line it up. Um, so let's see if I can get it here. Definitely takes some amount of finesse. You can see it's not my first rodeo. I did it. I was able to do it. You can too. Have patience. That's all I can say. Back it off a little so you can now shove in the last piece that you need, which is this shim. I might be able to get it in right now, I might not. I might have to back off the axle bolt a little bit because there is quite a lot of tension here stopping me from sliding it in. Oh, looks like I'm gonna have to do something to get it in here. No, that's not happening. Nope. So, lesson learned. Put this on that side first then try shoving the axle bolt through and you will be successful. Boom. Put the washer, the lock washer back on. Everything just as it was from factory. Go ahead and tighten it down. Grab your gun. Give it the master blaster. Go ahead and spin that chain. Make sure everything feels good. Make sure the chain looks lined up with the top gear, which I can see from down here looks absolutely perfect. You can see the tensioner is nowhere near in contact with the motor. Um, so we're very happy about that. And now we can go ahead and finish wiring it and give it a test. So we lay it back down. So the motor is all installed. All of that's gravy. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the end that came pinned and simply slide it in the opening that is under the factory seat. So you can see it literally fits right in there and you can open up the seat and you can grab it from the other side. You'll see it here in the video. It fits, no deep pinning necessary. Just a little bit of wiggling. Pick the seat up a bit and boom, you've got your harness through. Now this plug, the motor plug, just as I said earlier in the video, motor plugs always plug into the yellow and blue wire on the crazy cart controller. So boom, that's plugged in. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our 48 volt battery upgrade. 
I'm going to go ahead and pop that in. Boom, this is the Taxi Garage official 48 volt battery upgrade. This is one that we leave around the shop that uh, we use for testing purposes and things of that nature. And we'll go ahead and set this up. All right, so now your battery is gonna be plugged in to the power portion of it. And that is going to be red to red, black to black. And you might see a little spark action. And you can go ahead and come back around to the motor side. And we're basically going to finish the install with some zip ties. The kit does come with two new zip ties. Which will allow you to wrap your motor wiring harness just as it is from factory. And basically what we like to do when you route your new wiring is we want you to take the motor and spin it. 180 degrees both ways from straight and that'll allow you to set how much slack you need on this wiring so it doesn't bind up so right about there if I spin it both ways and I'm holding it on this stanchion support over here with my left hand I can see that the wiring is not going to come into contact with anything at that length and will rotate around the steering assembly with no issues so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my zip tie and I'm gonna zip tie the wiring at that length. Boom. Then you take your other zip tie and you zip tie it back to the bottom just like it was from factory. And now we snip the excess Just a quick snip, nothing fancy. And then you go ahead and grab your steering wheel, slide it back in, and oh my God, I can't believe it, but that was the easiest mod I've ever done to my crazy cart, and it's basically ready for full send. So let me go ahead and tighten this down and we'll see if we can do some burnouts. Right off the bat, that's how I like things to be. Just ready to send. Get them nice and tight. All right, let's get this shot. Does, does it all work? And when I press this switch, it should turn red. All right, we got money. So let's see how peppy she is, boys. done of the crazy card hands down this thing is so fast and the motor never gets hot with the air-cooled fins and it's just it's so much fun
Taxi Garage, everybody, send it with us. Check the website. We do have new Taxi Garage, or actually factory Razor OEM XL forks. So if you think you've sent yours too hard in the past and it may be bent or tweaked, we do have brand new forks in stock. So we can accommodate you with another one. Check the website or email us. And um, basically, yeah, we hope to see you sending it on one of our kids soon.